Hi all, welcome to another small video lecture on a subtopic of module 1 that is regarding data models, schemas and instances. So in the previous videos we already got an idea about what is a database right, and what is DBMS software. So like that some basic terminologies we saw already. Now it's time to explore data model, schema and instances, some terminologies. Okay. So we will start with the data model. As you already, uh, already know, I think in the previous video also I discussed this. It is one of the main characteristics of the database approach uh, that is to support data abstraction, right? So that different users can perceive data at their preferred level of detail. And you know uh, this terminology data abstraction you are uh, uh, studying in uh, object oriented design and many times you saw I'm you are familiar with this term, right? So the same interpretation here also we are having. So what is abstraction means you have to hide the implementation details, right? So at, at different levels we can provide this abstraction so that the uh, something that is needed for that level is only explored. Uh, I mean uh, to the concerned set of users and other I mean how these things are actually implemented that is uh, hidden from maybe a level below it like that. So data abstraction generally refers to the suppression of the details. So details are to be suppressed. So that is the uh, needed I mean requirement. So whenever somebody is looking at something it he can understand that it can do this one but how it is doing it that is no, not known to him right. So that is up to the uh, one who developed it okay. So we, do, we don't have to express that to the one who is using it like that. So the details are to be suppressed. So the suppression of details of data. So what kind of uh, details like data organization details or the storage details. And of course highlighting what is essential right. The essential features for an improved understanding of the data. So by looking at details you it's it's okay you will uh, get a very detailed knowledge but all are not interested to understand that much detail right. So from the user point of view. Uh, so he don't want that much technical details how things are implemented and all so it's always better if we can provide a abstract view of the entire thing so by hiding the actual implementation organization structural uh, details and pro try to provide the essential features so just for interacting with the user so that he, he, we can get feedback from him okay so that is the idea so how we are achieving this data abstraction and that is through data model so I, as I already told you like it is just like a, uh, the plan for a building right. So before uh, the, it's, it's not the actual building but plan by looking at the plan you will get a overview of the uh, building its uh, interior construction etc. But it's not the rea real thing right. So that about it. So here also in database we have a database models and that also multiple models we are having at multiple levels okay. So a data model is a collection of concept we will see that and that can be used to describe the structure of the database basically we are trying to show the structure uh, just like we are trying to show the actual structure of the home uh, by using a plan here we are using a data model okay so that provides a necessary means to achieve this abstraction so we are trying to achieve abstraction through data model okay by suppressing the details and highlighting the essential things okay. So by structure of a database we mean the data types, the relationships and constraints that apply to the data. So what are all the different types of data and how they are related to each other and what are all the constraints or conditions on the data. So those things only we will highlight and other details we will suppress. And most data models also include a set of basic operations for specifying retrievals and updates on the data. So sometimes uh, in addition to mentioning the data type relationship etc you can mention like uh, these are all the set of operation that we can do over the database and again don't look at the implementation of this operation okay. So you the user is having this set of like you, he can uh, insert data delete data update data like that set of operations also if you want you can mention as part of the model. So typically structure is enough but uh, sometimes we will express operations also. Now the question is why these models are needed okay so this uh, points I find interesting so I taken it and some uh, observations are like uh, the models can be useful when we want to examine or manage part of the real world so 
real world as a whole we don't want right so we are interested on some part of it and we want to examine it so instead of going into the uh, actual real world we can just look at a model of it just like uh, you know the globe uh, we are using that maps and all right yeah the same example you can think of the cost and another uh, so that is the uh, intention right where we are using model only in intention is like uh, we don't want to look at the entire thing but uh, we want to see a subset of it right so we want to exp uh, examine or manage as just a part of the real world and another thing is the cost of using the model are often considerably lower than the cost of using or experimenting with the real world itself so definitely if you are going for the real world and you want to e experiment the real world it's it's going to be costly right so if you are looking at the cost of the model it will be far less compared to the actual real world so in that way also you can approach model if you are in need so just like an analogy you can think this map is a model of the reality so we are not if you want to observe some area uh, right you are not going you can do that way also but it is costly and that is that that much uh, things are not needed right so rather you, you can look at the map and you can get an idea of its structure and uh, other things so now let's see so that is what is a model and why we are in need of model now in dbms uh, we have uh, some categories of data model that we can think of as i already told you at some different levels of detail uh, we can hide as well as some level of abstraction we can try, try to provide so accordingly there are different models used at different level of abstraction okay so the first one is like a high level or the conceptual data model then low level or physical data model these are two extreme in between we have uh, typically we have a representational or implementational data model okay as the name says high level or conceptual data the model it is just uh, telling the concept to the user right so this is something that is directly interacting with the user so as far as a naive user is concerned he don't know any technical jargon right so accordingly you should be able to express the uh, a view of the but at the same time you should be able to provide the a feel of the actual database but that is something very much user friendly so the high level or the conceptual data model provide the concept that are close to the way many users perceive the data that means he don't know the actual storage or some kind of technical jargon he, the users are not aware about it so you have to suppress that details and express the database uh, without losing any information in a many i mean in a much user friendly manner and you know we have uh, something called a uh, uh, er diagram entity relational model and that is one of the popular way of achieving it and we will be exploring it in detail in the first module itself in the second half okay so that about it now low level or the physical data model so this is another extreme as the name says it is close to the actual physical implementation of the database so here it is not something that is uh, used with the naive users or the one who is using the database it is something used by the one who is Im actually implementing the data database so after uh, having this conceptual design if you want you can go for representation or implementation model i mean that that comes in between then finally we will go for this low level or the physical data model and that time after this model so this model should be in such a way that we should be able to directly convert this model into the real implementation right so the model which is very much close to the actual implementation of the database is what we call as a low level of the physical data model and it is not for the naive user it is for the user of the database say like the one who is doing the actual implementation right so the provide the uh, concepts that describe the so definitely it is close to the implementation right so definitely it will have a concept that describe the details of how data is to be stored on the storage media uh, so definitely we are storing this database in the hardest right the typical magnetic disk so the actual storage details it will be having so accordingly you can store the data so that is the final step right and the concepts provided by physical data models are generally mean for computer specialist 
uh, not for the end user this is what i was saying so the high level or the conceptual data model is for the end user right where the uh, physical or the low level model is for the computer specialist who are going for the actual implementation so both are used at the two different extreme okay so accordingly uh, we can think about the two levels uh, of model now in between we can think of the third one that is representational or the implementational data model so the between about two extremes is the class of models which provide concept that may be easily understood by the end user but that are not too far moved from the way data is organized in the computer storage so it sits in between okay so when the user end user is concerned he can understand it right it's not that much confusing for him and at the same time it is somewhat similar to the actual storage details so it will be useful for both the computer specialist and end user and it sits between high level and low level model as an intermediate model so you have two choice either you can go from high level model to low level model or you can go from high level model to representation model and from representation model to low level model but uh, always you know if there are more levels it is easy for you to move right so steps also like uh, the same height if you have three steps or two steps uh, i mean uh, you know the difficulty of uh, moving over two steps but if there are three steps it is much easier right the so same thing is happening here also i am looking at the same height okay so for the design if you are moving on to representation low level so that will be more um, i mean um, easy for the implementer point of view right so high level to low level conversion will be somewhat difficult right because from most of the high level conceptual concepts you have to translate everything into much uh, physical storage related concepts so if you are going from high level to representation it is not so far away from the high level so it, the conversion process will be easy and then from there again you can go to low level because it is still closer to the low level also so that is a typical way we are following okay so that will be easy for us and if you want you can introduce more levels also but in typically we are following these three levels in any uh, database implementation right and here also you know the representational data model hide many details of the data storage on the disk but can be implemented on a computer system directly so that that is the thing uh, it's not like a physical data model most of the details of implementation i mean uh, storage and all it it's hidden from the user of course but at the same time that mapping to low level is easy so that is the benefit we are having here and you know uh, in representation model also we will explore in detail in the second module i, I think so uh, like where uh, we have a model called a relational database model rdbms so that is the one that is popularly used for this representational model so first we will do this uh, conceptual design using the dr model then that will be mapped to uh, the representational model like relational model and how this er model is can be mapped to rdbms this er and rdbms are two popular high level data model and representational model respectively so that is what we are exploring in detail and their mapping also we will study okay and low level and physical data model we will get a feel of it but we are not exploring much so once you have that relational data mo database uh, model you can directly go to that low level mapping so because it is uh, that much easy for the conversion so that conversion and all we are not highlighting but high level to representational uh, translation we will see in detail yeah now this is what i said already conceptual data model you can think about something called entity relational model as a uh, is a popular high level conceptual data model in use and this we will see and here you can see many concepts like what is entity and uh, what are all the properties of the entity or attributes and how they are related anyway this topic we will explore in detail in our upcoming uh, video lecture okay so entity represents a real world object or concept anyway you need a feel of it right so with the diagram and we will see this and uh, its properties and all we call as uh, at attribute or uh, how these entities are related is captured by relationship so this kind of a model we are using we will see this in detail of course and uh, similarly this also we will see later like the representational model uh, they are models used to mostly uh, most frequently in traditional commercial dbms maybe for banking application and that kind of uh, ircds and, and all we are using this rdbms model uh, these uh, include a wide uh, widely used relational data model so this is the i mean just like uh, uh, entity data model this relational data model is what we are using here mainly as well as 
the so called legacy data model uh, in addition to relational data model uh, traditionally uh, we were using something called uh, network data model and hierarchical data model okay and anyway uh, we don't have these things in our syllabus uh, these are obsolete thing, things so they are uh, known to be legacy models so as the name says they, they are very uh, i mean uh, very early databases we were using it but as of now this network hierarchical they are completely replaced by the relational model so that have been widely used in the past but uh, currently we are using this relational model so the uh, representational data model represents data by using something called record structures again this we will explore uh, we will represent data in the form of tables with each row of the table is typically what we call as a record so it is also called as a record based uh, data model okay this network and hierarchical these are obsolete one relational model or uh, is what is popular and where typically we uh, used a record based uh, data access and uh, a glimpse about that the final one that is physical data model that describe how data is stored in the that i already wrote it is a low level model right so it is dealing with the actual implementation and the storage as files in the computer by representing information such as the record format record ordering and the access path and you know how the structure so how these records are actually stored their format their uh, how they are ordered right one after another and those things are coming here and there is something called access path access path is typically a search um structure that makes the search for particular database record efficient uh, maybe by using indexing or hashing and this also we will explore maybe in the third or fourth module right this indexing uh, will come so this is a way of achieving uh, i mean uh, which, uh, so after storing the data at any time you should be able to retrieve the data right so how fast you can retrieve the data from a huge collection of data so that is where the searching is involved so if you can do the searching in a time uh, efficient manner that is always preferred right so we don't have to spend much time on retrieving some set of information we should get it fast so for that we are using this kind of indexing structures uh, as as well as hash structures okay so these are all generally uh, known to be the access path to the actual database so that about it hope you get an idea about what is data model so that is only we discussed here data model you know is a way of achieving data abstraction right and uh, it's just like that map that analogy you can think about it and uh, so why we are using because it is cost effective as well as we can um, study uh, some part of the actual real world without observing the real world itself and uh, uh, different data models we saw in uh, typical database design uh, started with uh, the high level or the concept data model then the, uh, the other extreme that is low level or the physical data model and in between you have the representation or the implementation model which are uh, sitting between the high and low level model yeah thanks for watching